everybody. Wendy Sellers here, the HR lady. We are here today with Richard Blank, CEO, calling in from Costa Rica. Hey, Richard, how you doing? Doing great, Wendy. So happy to be with you today. We are thrilled to have you. And I'm excited to ask you some of these questions regarding call center culture and attrition and something about gamification. So let's just kind of dive in. Tell us about yourself and how you got where you are today, as specifically in Costa Rica. You've been there for quite some time, right? That's right. I've been here for 23 years, but my story began in Northeast Philadelphia. When I graduated the proud Abington High School, I decided to double down on my favorite class, which was Spanish. I was a Spanish major at the University of Arizona. And then back in August of 2000, I had a one in a million opportunity to come to Costa Rica for a couple of months to work at my friend's center, teach some English. Well, I guess love what? it. You can get past your parents' guilt, Wendy. You can live anywhere in the world. So I decided to stay. I fell in love, married a Costa Rican, started a business. And here we are today on the HR Lady Podcast. (laughs) Hey, we're both from uh, Pennsylvania, upstate, uh, northeastern Pennsylvania for me, and then upstate New York for JC, my co-host here. Yeah, it's really cold over this way. I am not in Costa Rica. Kind of wish I was. Let me tell you, talk about a dream right there. And then building an entire life and career path and everything, the whole business, I'm totally blown away, especially when we're talking about optimizing call centers. You're really striking a chord. It's something that's passionate with me. I got to be honest with you. Well, Well, look at this. I'm sure I'm not the first to say that you got the best phone voice in the world. So they, <laughs> yes, oh, only does. second to you, Mr. <laughs> Richard. Come on. You. <laughs> only I second to you. You're killing it. On you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah. my friends, you fall into something like this. No one studies to be CEO of a call center. Most people hate telemarketers. And look what Hollywood did with the Wolf of Wall Street and Boiler Room and Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. I, you know, it's the art of speech. I think rhetoric is important, tone and delivery. And when you extend empathy, you can get the best out of people. And, you know, Wendy, I'm I'm reading your bio and it's so impressive and so many zigs and zags out there. But amongst your 25 years, you know that a lot of the times, if not most of the time, it's the employee that has the leverage. And if you break them, they leave. You can bend them, you can get them tough and do the Karate Kid Mr. Miyagi, but you don't ever want to give them the walk of shame or or break their dignity. Being a leader, you have this sort of power to promote or to fire. I I prefer to add momentum and wind in people's sails. That's why maybe I gravitated towards this specific position. I love it. They're so lucky to have you. It's amazing. So it sounds like, you know, since you're still sticking with it, you like it and you're changing lives. So let's talk about what's the difference between specifically in call centers, natural attrition and forced attrition. And why should we care? Well, most people say that it's a burnout job and you're lucky to make six months. Depends. Remember, whistle while you work and, you know, Snow White. I mean, you can also enjoy yourself, whatever job you do. And if you can't master this level, how can you master others? So. Natural attrition. I compete against Amazon, HP, Intel, and Oracle. So I'll lose somebody because your best friend's working there. I'd love to work with JC. If he's at Amazon, that's where I'm going. And a lot of the times it's in regards to a conflict for their schedule because the average age is 24. They might go to school. It might be closer to their home in regards to transportation if they're not work from home. And also if they have the skills, there are some areas out here that are more lucrative. So it's a me today, you tomorrow. I've gotten people, I've lost people, but I don't deliberately send somebody in to gut six people out of a company. Even though sometimes it does happen when you offer bonus or incentives, if some disgruntled employee leaves, he might bring four or five of his friends. And that's just the name of the game. What's forced attrition? Well, we have to follow the Costa Rican labor laws. Plus, there's ethics and morals to it. If someone's getting stoned at lunch, we just can't do that, okay? It's not the environment. You can't hang up your calls. You can't miss work or come late because there's only so much we can do. And, you know, maybe it might not be the right bus, right seat. But the most important thing for me is that if you're going to, you know, start strong and strong and be forthright with me. But I tell you what, my friends, The majority of the time, it's something that's happening outside of the office. It's the marriage, it's the parents, financial, the lights are turned off. 
And so they have this craziness, this locura in their lives that, you know, unless I stop it or filter it at the door, it could affect their performance on the phone. And so, you know, with me, I can't compete. I mean, sure, I can match base and benefits, but a lot of people like the name behind them. So what do I do? I, I try since I'm 150 strong, I can be selective. So there's natural filtration there. And, you know, it's really about people that like my gamification culture or coachable. And forget it. I, I'd hate to hire someone with bad habits. I'd rather have a squire to a knight, somebody that I can <laughs> mold and I can teach. CRM system's easy. <laughs> That's not the problem. Right. But I'm old school. I want pen at the ready. If you know how to write in cursive, I'm even more impressed. But we start in, in checkpoints because I don't want to overwhelm you. And, and please don't judge me on what happened on your last job as I won't judge you on what happened with your past supervisors or bosses. It's, it needs to be a clean slate and needs to be mature. We need to shed some skin and we need to begin again. And I think all of us are, are capable of coming together and doing this. And so prior to any training class, I'll throw them in the game room. When did JC, they're going to play some pinball and Pac-Man? so that they can decompress, make some friends, calm down for a minute. And instead of just absorbing the first day, which is waste of time, now they're contributing and they're interactive. Or we make them break through certain things by maybe standing up and doing public speaking the first day, or being a gentleman or a lady <laughs> and actually shaking a hand and introducing yourself to the 12 other people that are around you. Why? Because you should. Because that's the way we were raised by our parents and grandparents. This is and, um, absolutely fascinating, Mr. Richard. And I don't mean to jump in, but I want to support what you're talking about with some hardcore statistics. Ladies and gentlemen that are listening, according to Quality Assurance and Training Connection, QATC, the average attrition rate for a call center representative is 30 to 45 percent. And this yeah. is higher than the average attrition rate for all other occupations which is 12 to 15% higher. So it's very important to remember what we just heard and truly absorb that. According to Columbia University, the likelihood of job turnover in an organization with high company culture is only 13.9%, where the probability of job turnover in a low company culture is 484 So when you have a good leader establishing a positive culture, will be less likely to turn over. We need to blend. We need to mesh because it's not my environment. It's our environment. And so it needs to go both ways. And so my good friend, when, when I, I'm very selective of the campaigns that come in, JC, I'm not going to take something that I can't fulfill their needs or it's something the agents would burn out on or just not want to do. Yeah. Compromising ethics or doing something that's mean. You, you need to make sure it's a perfect fit. So the, Attrition gets reduced because of that. And also, since English is their second language, there's a very good chance they can make themselves more marketable and self-reliant and confident if I can give them that sort of foundation in North American genre and labor culture. So the smart one realizes that they make good money, but the experience plus the money will make them more money in the future compared to sacrificing for a job that pays for another dollar, but will just limit you. So this is a linguistic environment. And we focus very, very much on this delivery and balance and structure and being in the now and your QA key performance indicators. That's what I'm paying you to do. <laughs> on that. I like the soft skills and bedside manner, which you two have in abundance. And I give the most points. This is the fun part. Since people are working from home, Wendy and JC, you're going to hear dogs in the background. And so I immediately stop, drop and roll. I'll stop what I'm doing immediately. I go, yeah, Wendy, I love dogs. What breed is it? How old is your puppy? And what's his name? <laughs> and next thing you know, building the genuine bond. The genuine yeah, bond. Yeah, see the dogs barking. I can barely hear her. Right. You know? So I'm trying to let her know to put doggy out there. Yeah. And then she comes back and I talk about how amazing dogs are. And then she'll say to me, and it's, it's okay. What was your name again? Robert? No, no, it's Richard. Oh, Richard. It kind of got in the beginning, but they definitely got it then. And then all of a sudden <laughs> you get this positive reinforcement of that sort of exchange. And that to me 
is the true anchor. And so if you can focus on that sort of connection with people compared to angling, forcing, or trying to be clever and slick, yeah. then I think that you'll naturally have amazing numbers. Guess what, too? Your, your metrics are going to be way off. Billy, the supervisor, is going to be screaming at you because you're not making 100 calls a day. Now you're making 88. Yeah, but guess what, buddy? My talk time's increased and my conversions are there. So drink some more coffee and calm down. I love it. All of this has been so great, so informational. I could probably talk to you for hours. And this has been, you know, a lot of this information, while you're speaking of it for call centers, it really can be translated to everyday life of just good old communication and, oh, I don't know, active listening. So thank you so much for being on our show and for giving this information. If anybody wants to get in contact with you, how would they reach you? First, buy a first class plane ticket, fly to Costa Rica and come visit, <laughs> especially when it gets super cold up in New York. You know what I mean? There and they're go. not canceling school on, on snow days. That's terrible. <laughs> but uh, guys, I have a very, very large Facebook fan page of about 130,000 local Costa Rican Ticos. And so once this goes live, you'll have some audience there. And also I'll give your your audience a chance to see what the business process outsourcing industry is in Central America. I mean, we are north of Panama and south of Nicaragua, the only democratic society in Central America. There's no standing army here. Money got put back into education. There's a 95% literacy rate. And companies such as Amazon, HP, Intel, and Oracle are here. Got the best surfing in the world, ecotourism, and your buddy Richard is here. And I got a thousand and one suggestions for you and your fun audience. Awesome. We will make sure that we put your Facebook information in our podcast for our listeners. Richard Blank, thank you so much for explaining to us what a great call center culture should be and that our listeners can use this information for their company, even if they're not a call center. Thanks sure. for joining us. Take care. Bye now. 